You're listening to Red Card Sports Radio. This is Andy Whitelaw and Ahmad Khan. We have a very special guest in the studio today. Thank European you. Footballer of the Year, a Liverpool legend and winner of the Premier League title with Manchester United and, of course, scorer of that goal against Argentina in the 98 World Cup. It's Michael Owen. A big welcome to Singapore, mate. It's lovely to have you on the show. How are you doing? Yeah, thanks very much. It's um, it's my third time to Singapore, but I haven't been here for, for quite a while, so great to be back and, and great to be on your show. It's cool timing, actually, having you in the midst of the World Cup. It's been an incredible tournament, record amount of goals, loads of talking points, amazing players. What's been the highlights for you so far? Well, it has. There's been so many highlights. There's been so many goals in the tournament, some great performances, and some of the great players in the world have performed as well, which is always good to see. So, yeah, it's been a great tournament, and obviously there's been a fair load of controversy, which I'm sure we'll cover as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you talk about controversy. Suarez is the main person that everyone's talking about. What's your stand in it? Do you think his punishment was fair? Well, I do, actually. Yeah, I think he's he's broken the rules twice now in terms of biting and this is the third time so I I think you, you can only increase the punishment from the previous attempts the only I mean I don't feel sorry for Luis Suarez in many ways he's committed the crime and you, you just cannot bite people on the on the football pitch it's just not what happens so I've got no sympathy for, for Suarez but I have got sympathy for Liverpool because they've done nothing wrong in this whole whole uh, episode they well Suarez behaved really well last year for Liverpool he was their their best player scored loads of goals he was the best player in the Premier League and now for Liverpool to be punished for something he's done out of their control is is very tough for Liverpool to take that's right in the World Cup then who's uh, surprised you who's uh, well well, Costa Rica (laughs) put a number over England didn't they they've uh, surprised everyone haven't they yeah I think there's a few South American teams that have been particularly good I thought Chile were dark horses before the tournament and they've got through unfortunately for them they've got Brazil in the next round but I don't think it's a, an easy game for Brazil at all other teams that have surprised me well I, th- I think France have performed better than I thought they would Holland same um, as I say s- some South American teams you mentioned Costa Rica and I mentioned Chile but there's been a lot of good teams. Um, Greece qualifying is a is a big surprise as well. But I think you know there's there's a few teams that you think are going to win or have a chance of winning before the World Cup. And and the two big boys are still in Brazil and Argentina. They're still in there, even though they haven't been at the top of their game yet. They're still the teams to beat. Oh, for England, you know, it's been a lot of talk about them. I'm sure you've, you've had this quite a bit. I want to start off with Wayne Rooney, though. You know, he's reached your mark of 40 goals. Do you actually think, um, how far do you see him going? Everyone's going to think that he's definitely going to beat the record, but do you think it's it's a worthy achievement for him? Because, let's let's be honest, he's, he's been, he hasn't been the most popular guy in uh, England squad in this World Cup, at least. Yeah, that, that's right. But I think it's very unfair because he's been asked to play on the left side of midfield for the first game and we all know where his best positions are and that's central that's you know either as a number nine furthest forward or number 10 just behind the striker and the problem is when you play him on the left and then someone plays uh, storage in this case was played in the number nine position and, and played well and scored and then Sterling played in behind storage and he was the man of the match so all of a sudden you have a big problem whereby it's very hard to put Rooney back into his best position now we all know Wayne Rooney's a very good player, one of England's best players. So, you know, I think you have to find um, somewhere in the team for him and ideally in his best position. But obviously Roy Hodgson made a decision to play two other players in there and almost pushed Wayne into a position that he's not used to playing. So it was, I think it was very difficult for Wayne, but he scored a goal and I, I, I think his performances were fine in the World Cup. Not brilliant, but not poor. He was he he played reasonably well, so I think the criticism can be a little bit harsh on Wayne. Once everything's said and done, it's easy for everyone to become a manager and a pundit, isn't it, and give their opinion? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. But, uh, if if you were the manager, how might have you done things slightly differently? It's once you know we've got the benefit of hindsight, haven't we? Yeah. Well, exactly. I, right from the start, I thought Roy Hodgson picked a good squad. I wouldn't have disagreed with anyone. Maybe I would have put a, another defensive midfield player in because Steven Gerrard was our only defensive midfielder. As it happens, Stevie didn't get injured and it wasn't required anyway. So, in many ways, I couldn't have argued with um, Roy Hodgson's squad. Then the start in 11, maybe I would have found a, a place for Ross Barkley. I think Ross Barkley is one of our best, brightest, up and coming talents. He's a phenomenal talent. He's very young, and when you play in an important position, like in the number 10 role, you can be a little bit inconsistent in games because that's what happens when you're young. Your consistency isn't there, but he can produce a moment of magic like 
nobody else on the football pitch and I would have tried to, to find a place in my team for him. Um, but apart from that, I think he Roy Hodgson picked some good teams. I think his substitutions were fine. I don't blame the manager, really. Uh, you know, I think we've got a problem with our players in, in many ways, the mentality, the ability, um, lots of different things. And probably not the last person, but certainly wouldn't be the first person to blame as, as the manager. Well, um you know, it, it's something that I'm sure you're familiar with. I read your blog and you wrote it sometime in 2013 about having youngsters moving the way forward for England and to see it doing like that, which is why you don't have any... It's kind of like a justification for what you say, but moving forward now, uh, how how can they improve from this this showing? Yes, they have done what you see, had no problems with the team selection, but of course they didn't do as well in the tournament. So how, how are they going to move forward from this now? Well, exactly. I'm glad you did a bit of research <laughs> yeah. with my blog. Yeah. <laughs> But that's still how I feel, and, and you know I came f- through the Liverpool um, ranks at a certain time, at the same time as some other players, um, Jamie Carragher, Stephen Gerrard. Before that was Steve McManaman, and Robbie Fowler. There was an opportunity to break into first teams reasonably easily if you were good enough. Same with with Manchester United, the class of '92. If you're good enough, you will get given your chance. But we have a real problem in, in England at the moment, and that is that the reserve team football has now been dispensed with. Um, you go straight from youth team football into first team football, and that, that gap is just so big. You're never, ever going to go from a, a youth team and get Suarez out of the team or Yaya Torre out of yeah. the team or any of these players. They're just too good. And but what you can do is is have a better structure, have a, another stepping stone like reserve team football in my day. And now all the players... The only way you can be a footballer in many ways is to go out on loan to a, a smaller team and that's where you're seeing all our talent go. And from a, a Premier League a few years ago that had over 60% players that were English, now that it's just over 30% and that tells it all. We've not got enough players to choose from and enough good players to choose from. I've just got to ask, you're a player agent now and you do all sorts at the moment, don't you? But <laughs> Can you give us any names, up-and-comers that uh, the English fans might want to get excited about? Well, unfortunately, there's some good players, but none of them are English. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Darren lies the problem, right? <laughs> no, we the, listen. England have got. We continue to produce good players. I watch, you know, um, youth team games on a regular basis. We do continue to produce players, but the pathway into the first teams of the big teams nowadays is virtually impossible to to make that jump. And all the good players that are coming through, people mentioned Southampton that have a great production line, Bale, Shaw. Theo Walcott, Oxlade Chamberlain, uh, Lalana, there's five off the top of my head. Well, they all came through when Southampton were in the championship and when they were in Division One even. And that's when they got given the chance. And that just goes to show mm. that you have to be given a chance. And you, you, if they were in the Premier League now and those kids came through, I'd argue that not that maybe none of them would get to the level that they've got to, but they were given a chance at, at a modest level and they've improved every time something's been thrown at them up until the Premier League. And even in you know, in Gareth Bale's case, he's gone on to be one of the best players in the world. He was at Tottenham and you know, he couldn't win a game for the first forty games. He's gonna be get dropped and sold and when it, but if you keep persevering with players and keep giving them the opportunity, they will develop into good players over time. But unfortunately we haven't got that time when you need to win the Premier League and you've got all these the best players in the world playing in your team. So plenty of time for England to kind of address things then uh South American, Central American teams, as you mentioned, dominating this World Cup. Who's your pick to win it? Well, I said Argentina at the start of the tournament. I just feel that they've got so much talent, especially going forward. But they're not weak in defence either. Um, but when you've got Messi, Higuain, Di Maria, um, Aguero, who's obviously picked up a slight injury, uh, players of that calibre going, you know, going forward, Zabaleta is a top quality uh, fullback, attacking fullback. They've got some real quality, so. I don't think there's one standout that you think, well, these are certainties to win it. There's so many that can win it, but I picked Argentina at the start and I'm going to stick with them now. <laughs> Solid. You know them quite well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about uh, your playing days then? This Liverpool team's made so many headlines. We've seen a lot of them in the England team, actually. How does that Liverpool team compare to the Liverpool team you played in when they were at their heights and they won uh, all those trophies under Gerard Houllier? Well, there's a slightly different style of play. I really love the Liverpool team at the moment. Last year, it was fantastic to watch. You went to Anfield excited to watch a good game of football. They scored goals, they attacked. Yes, they conceded goals, but they played to their strengths. And Well, you know, in Sterling, Suarez and 
and Sturridge, they had three of the best attacking um, weapons that, that you could have in the Premier League. Steven Gerrard had a fantastic year and so did Henderson. He had some you know, great energy and legs to, to that midfield. So they were a real good team to watch last year and Brendan Rodgers has gone out and bought a, a few players already. So I think Liverpool are a really exciting team. Brendan Rodgers done a remarkable job in the short time he's been there but the acid test now is to stay there without Suarez for a good few games you know it's it's one thing going from seventh to second but it's an even bigger jump going from second to first and that's going to be the hard thing for Liverpool next season uh, you know, speaking of your playing days when you were from Liverpool and then you moved to Real Madrid for eight million pounds just just a curious question that I've always been wondering in today's day and age you know with all this price inflation of buying and selling players how much do you think you'd actually be worth if you were still playing in today's day and age? hundred <laughs> <laughs> or two hundred million? Like that. <laughs> no, I, uh, I went with only one year left on my contract, so obviously that muddied the picture a little bit because I returned to England the year after for 16 million, so that was probably a, 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 you know, a truer um, value um, of me at that time, but as you say, that's a, <laughs> only an okay player nowadays. You have to be spending 30, 40, 50 million to be getting a really top-class player, so... Prices continue to go up. It's amazing. You think football is going to plateau off or even drop down, but the prices just continue to, to go higher and higher, and I can't see it stopping. Television money is getting bigger, so more more money in the in the pot for people to spend. I think a lot of people wonder this. As a, as a human being, you know, you're a man, and then you're considered to be worth 8, 10, 15, 20 million pounds. Is that quite weird? I mean, that's a sum of money... That, you know, even when our boss gives us a bonus, I think we might struggle to, <laughs> yeah. struggle to reach that sum. But that's a huge, huge amount of money and, and people will pay that just for you. Is that was that strange to come to terms with, especially at a young age? Well, it would make me feel different if they put it into my pocket. But as it was going <laughs> <laughs> from club to club, then I didn't. you don't really think about it, I suppose. Well, I mean, we often talk about pressure and I'm not a, the biggest believer in, in pressure. I can only speak from, from my experiences, but... All the players I've played with, if you've got a supreme confidence and, and self-belief in your ability, then you don't really get nervous about playing, don't really get nervous about what you cost or who you're playing with. You just believe that, that you belong there and, and that's life. I mean, I get nervous when I'm standing on a golf tee and there's 10 people watching. And that's when I get, because I'm not sure if I can hit the ball straight down the middle. Whereas on a football pitch, you can put 10 people or 10 million people. I wouldn't be bothered because I'm really confident in what I do. So pressure and things like that I'm not really convinced when you're at the top of your profession then you almost want pressure you want to be tested in the biggest arenas with the best players you want to be bought for the most amount of money that's that's what you feed off you actually like pressure when you're at the top of your game well you look at the likes of you know the this youngsters Luke Shaw under Herrera Luke Shaw 30 million pounds when 18 year old um, it is a bit of a it, it, it has come down for a bit of criticism. I've seen Paul Scholes coming out and saying that you know you don't pay thirty million for a player who's like uh, who's just going to be just playing at left back at such a young age. And where do you stand in that? Well, I think that you do nowadays, and I think that he's English, which you know the natural inflation to that. <laughs> yeah, you get there is a bit of inflation when you buy English, but he's so young. He's got fifteen years um, of playing, and at fullback now, it's a very important position. In fact, every position on the pitch is important, but fullbacks, you know, are more important nowadays than they've ever been. And he's a very good player. He's proven in the Premier League. He has got age on his side. As I say, it's an investment for a long, long time. They're not paying 20, 30 million for a 28 year old. They're paying for an 18 year old. He's got 15 years or more at the top of his game. So if he is as good as everybody thinks he is, then I actually think in this market, He's probably worth it. Um, he's an exceptional player with loads of speed, and I think he's got the the mentality to to cope with it at Old Trafford. So I think it could be a good buy, even though at the moment you're thinking thirty million for a left back. <laughs> you wouldn't pay three million for a left back about ten years ago, but now they're important players. So with Liverpool getting in Lalana, we're hearing, and uh, United Herrera, sure, we hear there's going to be another three to come in. They might, <laughs> Liverpool might get the lad from Belgium. How does this affect your? early predictions for next season well it's always <laughs> hard isn't it predicting this early but I do still think there's going to be loads of changes I admire Liverpool the way they move early in the market they've done it a few times now um, but I'm pretty surprised that they haven't you know, really invested in a top class uh, defender yet because I thought that was their priority and I'm sure they will still invest in one Manchester United yes they've 
um, look as if they've bought well and bought big. But again, I think they're enjoying spending money at the moment because they're desperate to get back up to the top and there's certainly more money in the coffers, I think, for them to spend. So Liverpool, Man United, I'm sure they're going to be you know, active even further in the in the window. And then you look at the other teams, Chelsea, great buy in Fabregas. And if they get Costa from Atletico Madrid, then... Wow, you Watch know that out. could be a couple of really <laughs> yeah. star signings. So they're they're serious. Man City signing so far. I'm not sure too much about Fernan- Fernando. Uh, I'm not seeing him play much. Right back Sanya is you know is okay, but he's not as good as Zabaleta. So unconvinced there. But they are the champions, so they're the team to beat. Arsenal, as per normal, don't buy anyone. <laughs> Um, so I'm surprised well I'm not surprised at that but they do need to buy someone and, and quite a few if they want to challenge for the for the league and um, so yeah it's 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 all happening it's all exciting you know early stages well if they get Costa Chelsea then I'd say Chelsea are, are looking pretty strong to me could you could you put a top four to it <laughs> would you you're trying to line me up to get <laughs> <No>. shot <laughs> um, well would, I, would I think I think Man City Man City are the champions and, and they're a special team. They're not going anywhere. They've got a, they're investing for the future. Great academy, great stadium. The training ground that they're building at the moment blows your mind. It's absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. So I'd say the top four <laughs> are going to be first and second, I'll say City and Chelsea. I'm not sure which order until they get you know we get closer to the... I think Man United are going to be top four again because they're serious and they've got a, a really good manager. Um, and I'm going to say Liverpool as well. I think it'll be harder for Liverpool this year. Um, but with Arsenal's lack of transfer activity, Tottenham aren't the same team as they were. They've got a new manager, but they're not as good as they were three or four years ago. Um, I don't see anyone else really. So, yeah, my top four will be those, but I'm not going to tell you what order just yet. <laughs> oh. 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 We'll, we'll take it. I guess we'll take it. it, it <laughs> okay, it, okay. Oh. We don't know our exact top four, but uh, that's... that's It's mi- still too early, mate. Pretty miserable listening for, <laughs> for the fans from North London, I have to say. For you especially, yeah? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. All right, fantastic stuff, Michael. Much appreciated. We're going to go for a short break. <laughs> Red Card Sports Radio. 